the devil's counterfeiting. <clears throat> I, I believe that the fivefold ministry gifts are tools of war, weapons of war. Praying in the Holy Ghost is one of the most... Someone asked me the question. They said, um, Bishop, what, what do you attribute, you know, whatever they call success? And I said, I, I don't see success as much as I see consistency. What do you attribute my consistency to? I attribute it to my understanding and my consistent habit of praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues has saved my life. When I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it changed my whole life. It, it changed everything that was in me. It, it changed everything. It, it altered my perceptive, my perceptions. It opened me up to so much that I, I really just can't even explain to you. <clears throat> I don't see it as success. I see it as my consistency. And my consistency not only is connected to knowing my calling, knowing my gifts, knowing Holy Spirit, but praying in tongues every day. I, I, I can't impress upon you how it has saved my life. I, I can't impress up on you how vital uh, Betsy Willis. I can't, I can't, if I had words, if I could, let me say it like this. I'm a nurse by profession. I would hook up an IV to everybody that would make you speak in tongues all day. I, I, I don't, because I don't think you understand how important it is. I, I don't I don't think you understand speaking in tongues, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost every day, speaking in tongues over and over throughout the day. And how it guards you from deception. How it guards you from deception. Somebody put that in the chat. Speaking in tongues every day will guard me from deception. Mm. Hey, glory, glory, glory to God. Whoa. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues every day. Making, praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. Exhorting yourself in tongues every day will guard you against deception. And, and, and I don't know if you understand how important you it is for you and I to speak in tongues. Write that down in the chat. Speaking in tongues every day. Praying in tongues every day will guard us, will guard me from deception. <clears throat> and it keeps Holy Spirit present in your cognitive knowledge, in your knowledge where you are consistently aware of his presence. Woo, we got to sing that song last night. Make us more aware of your presence. Make us more aware of your presence. Holy Spirit, make us aware, more aware of your presence. 
<clears throat> so we can experience the glory of your goodness. But make me aware, make me aware of your presence. Oh my God. And I'm on no shade. Good morning, Miyoshi Hunter. Coming up, Bridget Horton, Carol, Carol Ford. Listen to me. Speaking in tongues, praying in tongues every day will guard you from deception because you are building your spirit, man. It's like working out. When you go to the gym, you are working your muscles. You're working your core. You're working, you're, you're getting uh, agile. Well, it's the same when you speak in tongues every day. When you speak in tongues every day, you are guarding yourself from deception. You're guarding yourself. You're building your, your most holy faith. You're building yourself up from deception. And remember when Jude was speaking about building yourself up in your most holy faith, he was speaking because it was a culture of deception. That verse lands in Jude, the pericope, the entire context is about the, 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 the culture of lasciviousness, compromise. And so when you are, when you are speaking in tongues daily, when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, sometimes when I go back and I watch the lives, and I have these outbursts of the Holy Spirit in tongues. I recognize that Holy Spirit is refueling me. Refueling, refueling, refueling. Or he's dropping something that he needs me to say. He's dropping something in my spirit. Folks, you cannot live. With more, Joyce King, you cannot, you cannot make it without speaking in tongues every day. Every day, you've got to pray in tongues more. Write that down. I will pray in tongues more. Write that down. Write that down in the chat. I will pray in tongues more. I will be more consistent in praying in tongues. Makisha Day, Deborah Hill, praying in tongues every day will guard me, will protect me from deception. It will make you more keen in the spirit. It will make you more keen, more alert, more aware. Your discernment, your discernment will heighten. It will increase. Your discernment is dull. And when your discernment is dull, deception is imminent. When your discernment is dull, yeah, come on. Write that down. I will pray in tongues more. I will pray in tongues more. I will be more consistent in praying in tongues every day. Write that down. Make a confession and talk and type. When you're typing it, say it out of your mouth. Now, we must be more aware of the counterfeiting, counterfeiting activity of Satan. <laughs> oh, Grace, say, Elder Kathy Hawkins, see if that Fowler, come on. I will pray more in tongues. I will speak in tongues every day more. I will pray in my prayer language more. I will activate speaking in tongues more. When I go to worship, I will speak in tongues in my worship. Uh, assembly, I will speak in tongues more during worship. I will speak in tongues more because what happens is that you edify yourself. I want you to be more consistent about speaking in tongues. I want you to be more consistent about praying in tongues more because your, your discernment is too low. Your discernment is too low. Mm, mm, mm. And you accept things. Here we go. You're accepting things that you once were clearly, clearly, well, let me say, you're accepting things that you were, you were once clear you could not. 
How about that? Good morning, Deirdre. Good morning, at Raw. Let's go. Let's go. I want you to activate praying in the Holy Ghost more. Because what happens is you get desensitized to the things that are not of God. You get desensitized and there was a time you would not have accepted that. But now you accept it and you no longer sense the conviction of Holy Spirit. And that is because your discernment is dull. Woo, shaka babasia. Thank you, God. Hey, God, Neoshi. Thank you for downloading more. My discernment is low. And when you're this, I don't care how much scripture you read. I don't care how much church, how much gospel music you listen to. If you are not praying more in tongues, Evangelist Carol and Faye, if we are not teaching, Dr. Anika Wilson Brown, we must. When your discernment is low, your emotions are high. Somebody write that down. When your discernment is low, then your emotions are high. Because your emotions will sit in the place of spiritual discernment. And you think that you are discerning by the spirit when you're actually discerning by your emotions. Oh God, I hear you this morning. And when you are not praying actively in tongues, you are desensitized. To the enemy's tactics. To the enemy's counterfeiting. You can't properly discern it. Because when your discernment is low. Your emotions are high. Listen. If you find yourself more emotional. If you're finding yourself more sensual. If you are finding and noticing about yourself. That you are more reactive. If you are finding yourself defending what you used to rebuke. Whoa, glory, hey God, Ibaniusha. What you used to rebuke, you now defend. What you used to stand against, you now understand it. No, 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 no. Your discernment is low. Ema, your emotions are high. If you once stood against fornication. And now you are saying, well, you know, they're going to get married and ah, 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 ah. your discernment is low. What you once rebuked, what you once knew was clearly not of God. And now you are saying, ah, well, it's all right. Or you're validating it or you now understand it. Your discernment is low and your emotions have sat in the place of your spiritual discernment. And that is happening because you're not keeping your spiritual language on board at all times. Are you hearing me? Good God Almighty. And when your emotions are high, when you're sensual, when you are defending error, when you are defending what is wrong, when you are defending what is clearly in the scriptures, there was a time you wouldn't defend it. There was a time it was abhorrent to you. Well, glory to God, there was a time when you said, that ain't God, folks. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. Ha, he he thought I see. Listen, listen, listen. And now, now you understand it. Well, I understand. It's all right. They're young. They're, no, no, no. There was a time when that was an area that you were clear. There was an area where you had a conviction about it. There was an area where you would have rebuilt. But now you accept. What has happened? Your emotions 
are high and your discernment is low. You find yourself now validating and supporting what you used to rebuke. You're not praying in tongues enough. You're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't have a high view of praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't have a high view. It's not a consistent habit for you. It's not a consistent and daily habit of prayer for you. And now your standard, you have lowered the bar of expectations. Yet the word is clear. And you have to have the conversation with yourself to say, wait a minute. Why am I justifying that? Why, why am I standing up for that? What, why, why am I aligning myself with that? Why does their reasoning now make sense to me? There was a time when I would stand against that or I would, have, I would be able to refute that or I would be able to give the remedy for that. But now I understand I'm aligned. There was a time I would rebuke that. There was a time when I would know for sure to avoid that. But now I, uh, well, it's all right. That, it's all right. <laughs> Your discernment is low. And this is how 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, Satan appears as an angel of light. With the absence of the fivefold ministry, you're going to have to speak in tongues and build yourself up until the full fivefold ministry gifts have been restored back to the church. You must take it up on yourself to stay on your watch. You cannot let film come over your eyes. You cannot let film, you cannot let your hearing get muffled while God is restoring the fivefold ministry gifts, you cannot allow yourself now to lower what it is you know to be about Christ. Glory to God. Whoa, there was a time you said, I can't watch that movie. That, no, uh-uh. And now you find yourself on Netflix and Hulu and who knew and all the rest of them. And now you're engaging it. Now you are saying, that's all right. It was just a little cuss word. Oh, it's all right. I've seen rest before. It's all right. I've seen people make love before. Okay. 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 They ain't married. They ain't doing nothing. But what is it doing? It's coming through your eye gates. And the reason now that you have suddenly, because you are no longer alert, praying in the Holy Ghost will keep you alert. Your senses are being dulled. By the culture, your senses are being dulled by the justification of your peers, by the justification of folk who, who live ungodly, who, who are reckless uh, in, in, the, in the church. Now you say, well, if they get away with it, if they get away with it, then I, maybe, uh, maybe I was a little bit too tight. Uh, maybe I was a little bit too, you know, strict. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and this is what happens. My parents were strict. Now I'm not going to be that strict on my kids. And now they're going to be less strict than you. And before you know it, you got a generation like we got of, of, of people who, who, who are reprobate, who have no desire to serve the Lord. My God, my no shot. <laughs> Netflix, Hulu, and who knew, baby? And all it's doing is, 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 is making your, making your spirit dull. Making your spirit dull, making your spirit dull, making your spirit dull. You're entertaining yourself with things that you once would rebuke. You're entertaining yourself. You're allowing your family music to change in the household. You're allowing your music to change just a little bit in the car. You, 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 you know, you, you're allowing yourself boundaries are being moved. You're allowing yourself room and spaces because you become desensitized because the conviction of Holy Spirit is not as strong as it once was because you're not edifying. You're not building yourself up. You're not praying in tongues on a daily basis. And so you are becoming dull in the spirit. And now when you become dull in the spirit, emotions take over. Sensuality takes over. Your sensual nature now begins to drive. 
God. And before you know it, uh, you are in a place where now you cannot discern evil from good. Mando, Hata, you got to hear me today. You got to hear me. Woo, you become desensitized. You become desensitized. Rudy, we become desensitized. Glory to God. And then when we, those that have, have, have labored in holiness, not, 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 not religion, but have labored in living right, labored in the word, labored in doctrine. Now we're mean. Now we're wrong. Oh, that's just Bishop. She just mean. I've never been, I've never been mean a day in my life. And I'm not wrong when it comes to the word of God. I'm just telling you that praying in the spirit every day, praying in the Holy Ghost every day is what keeps me consistent. It's what keeps me alert. It's what keeps my eyes from being cloudy. It's what keeps my ears from being sharp, uh, from being dull. It keeps me sharp. It keeps my discernment accurate because you're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You're putting other things in front. And there was a time when you were more sensitive to that. You now validate what you once rebuked. You now validate once what you once walked away from. You now internalize and incorporate it. Hey, Shannon, and I will see ya. There's my sweetie coming up the timeline. Come on, Pastor Shannon. And so we have to realize, in my no shot, that when our discernment is low, our emotions are high. When our discernment is low, our sexuality is high. I said it. Let me repeat myself so you don't think I stammered. When your discernment is low, your sexuality is high. Let me say it again. When your discernment is low, your sexuality is high. When your discernment is low, your eye gates are wider. They're open. When your discernment is low, your sensual nature has a stronger and a more intense aroma to it. When your discernment is low, your sexuality is high. Your sensuality is high. Your temper is high. When your discernment is low, you're more reactive. You're more easily to be offended. You're more easily to take the wrong stand on the wrong side. When your, when your discernment is low, come on now, your tolerance, your tolerance for things that are not of God are high. Oh, glory to God. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to call myself old school because I ain't old. Ain't nothing about me old. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't old. My children ain't old. And the Holy Ghost, he ain't old. No, I don't. But I do, I do pray in tongues so that my discernment stays high. And there are songs that I don't know. There are artists that I don't listen to. There are radio stations that I don't even engage because I cannot allow my eye gate. I was, I was, you know, you say strict, but I was clear with my children when they were growing up. There was certain music that I didn't want them. It didn't mean they didn't do it, but they didn't do it in my house. And if I, if I found it in, the, in my house, I destroyed it. And I'm still the same way today. Now they grown, they do what they want to do in their own house, but they got the standard. And when your discernment is low from not praying in the Holy Ghost, not praying in the Holy Spirit every day, not speaking in tongues every day. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel it right now. Hallelujah. 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 Your temper is high. When you're reactive, you're not listening. When you're, when, when you're quick to respond, you're not listening. Because you're, you're more reactive. You're more fleshly. You're more carnal. And that's because you're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You're not praying in the Holy Ghost enough. And so it's hard for you to have discernment of the enemy's devices. It's hard for you to recognize the counterfeit. It's hard for you because your discernment is so low. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And some of you cannot see the real, the, the real for the counterfeit. You cannot see the real for the counterfeit. Let me say that again. 
Somebody write that down. Some of you cannot see the real for the counterfeit. You're so intoxicated by the counterfeit. You're so intoxicated. You're intoxicated. You're enamored. You're attracted to the counterfeit more than you are the real. And that's because, Imano Shiki say, that is because you're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You're too reactive. And you cannot see uh, the real for the counterfeit. And you've got to know that the counterfeit is not going to come overtly. There's going to be enough mixture in it that is going to be confusing. And Jesus said that if I don't shorten the times, that the very elect will be deceived. Are you listening to me? You're not praying in the Holy Ghost, Bishop Burns. We're not praying in the Holy Ghost. And you cannot see the real for the counterfeit. And what you have made, the counterfeit, is so, so close to the real that when the real comes, mm, you take the counterfeit over the real. This is the spiritual warfare of the day. The spiritual warfare of the day is not the devil running up and down the streets. It's not witches in caps and brooms. It's not Halloween. Y'all so gooky. Good Lord. You so gooky. You gooky. Just gooky. You against Christmas. You against Halloween. That ain't the problem. <laughs> and while you trying to be against that, <laughs> then the ungodly slip into the church and turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Y'all so gooky. When did you get gooky? How many times did you trick or treat? Come on, you gooky. You done got gooky. That ain't the devil and you chase that. All of October, watch when October come. Oh, here come all of these religious folks. Ain't nothing wrong with Halloween. Ain't nothing wrong with Christmas. Ain't nothing wrong with the Easter Bunny. What's wrong is that pornography you're watching, that Netflix movie, that music that you're listening to while you're hunching and going on. That's what's wrong. Speak about that. Come against that. Just gooky. Got nothing to do with God whatsoever. Got nothing to do with spirituality. Dull. Trying to find something to, try to, find something to come against. Because you're so captured by the enemy, you don't even know. You don't even know. Gookie. <laughs> hey, 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 Gookie. And so you cannot see the real for the counterfeit while you running after Halloween and running after Santa Claus and running after the Easter Bunny. Ungodly men have crept in and turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. <laughs> How many people was against social media? How many people was against it? And now it's the way God is evangelizing the world. Gooky. Just gooky. I'm just like, oh Lord. Because you cannot see the real for the counterfeit. And this is why I am here in the pandemic to help you to learn what is good and what is evil. What is good and what is evil. Yes, Mother Pearl can't see the forest for the trees getting ate up. <laughs> Get ate up by lust, get ate up by tempers, get ate up by anger, and go and come on social media talking about trick or three. Are you serious? Do you really think that Jesus has a problem with that? No, but what he does have a problem with is all that drinking and cussing you're doing. What he really has a problem with is how you have perverted worship, what you wear to church. What he really has a problem with is how you don't speak in tongues and how you don't read the scriptures. That's what he got a problem with. Hey, Shabbat. Whoa, glory to God. Whoa, God. And 
we are chasing the counterfeit. And this is how the enemy transforms himself as an angel of light. Oh, glory to God. Second Corinthians, let's go there for just a minute. Chapter number 11, 14. And this is all because of the absence of the fivefold ministry. The absence of the fivefold ministry has made us gooky, has made us immature. And foolish. And we run after stuff. You full of offense. Full of anger. Full of, of, of unforgiveness. And want to take trick or treating from the child. Gooky. I said it. Gooky. Gooky. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But that's what we do. We chase the counterfeit. We think we're, we're, we're claiming something. And, and opening up. No. That's not revelatory. That's religious, folks. While you, why, why you can't even submit to authority, you don't even speak to your mother. You don't even speak to your father. You don't speak to your sisters and brothers. You're taking communion and fornicating, but you won't come against that. But you come against the Easter Bunny. Woo, shakaba, <laughs> gookie. That that was that was something I know I don't know nothing about that. That's Holy Spirit when it comes. But I said what I said, I won't take it back. Second Corinthians, let's go there. Praise God. Chapter number eleven. Second Corinthians chapter. And so we we are being desensitized. We're desensitized because we're not praying in the Holy Ghost. We're not praying in the Spirit. We're not praying in the Holy Ghost every day. Every day, every day, every day, all the day, every day. The little Easter Bunny ain't hurt nobody. <laughs> Y'all trying to kill Santa Claus. Oh, Santa Claus hurt. None of that has anything to do with spiritual warfare, folks. But but because your discernment is so low, then your emotions are high. You get on the bandwagon talking stuff. I'm just, folks, let me help you. You got to pray and talk. Why are you messing with the Easter Bunny? Has the Easter Bunny hurt you? Why, why do you want to kill Santa Claus? Why? Did he do something to you? That ain't spiritual. But desensitized, desensitized, <laughs> desensitized, worried about all the wrong stuff. Why are you walking around full of offense? Why are you walking around full of anger? You're not even praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, folks. <laughs> Gosh, Woo, glory God. <laughs> Second Corinthians, come on here. Chapter number 11. Chapter number 11. And I want to, I want, I want to go back here. We, we've done it again, but I want to, I want to look at it one more time. If you will help me. Second Corinthians. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he says here, he says, uh, I am jealous for you. I'm in verse two with a godly jealousy because I promised you to one husband, the Lord Jesus, to Christ that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunnings, your minds may somehow have been led astray from your sincere and pure devotion of Christ. Wow. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus that we preach, that is so that is so deep right there. That is so deep right there. I, I, I was sharing with John yesterday. I said, you do realize that they're not preaching our Jesus. They're not preaching our Jesus. That there are other Jesuses that are being preached. 
He says, if anyone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, watch this, watch this. Or if you receive a different spirit from the one that you receive from us, that's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, glory. Or is there a different gospel from the one that you've accepted, you put up with it easily enough. Mando Yashikaba. Somebody get that. Somebody get that. Get that. I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. And I want you to look at verse number 3 and 4. So your minds have somehow been led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. What? He says, for if someone comes to you, this is verse 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. And this is the NIV. Mm, my God. <laughs> look here. Hey, look here. It says, for if someone comes to you, y'all got this? Joyce, put that up. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, how you gonna know it? How you gonna know it's a different Jesus? And you're not praying in the Holy Ghost. Your discernment is so low, you don't even know it's another Jesus. You don't even know it's another Jesus. Listen to this. And if you have received a different spirit, if you receive a different spirit from the one you received from us, glory to God, or you have received a different gospel, you receive a different gospel from the one you've accepted. Watch this. Watch this. And you put up with it. Whoa, glory. And said nothing about no Easter bunny. Ain't said nothing about Santa Claus. Ain't said nothing about Halloween and trick-or-treating. There are some other things that are much more serious happening than the Easter bunny, the trick-or-treating, and the and the and the Easter egg hunt and Santa Claus is much more. Y'all gooky. Ah, it kabooshi. Look here. Look at here. Look at here. Look what he's saying is deceiving us. Another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And you're talking about Halloween. You're talking about tr trick or treat. Look at us. And this is because of the absence of the fivefold ministry gifts. And now we have got to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. You can't discern what's counterfeit. Listen to the things that's going to deceive you. He said, what? Another Jesus. What else? Number two, another spirit. And what else? Number three, another gospel. That's what's going to kill us. That's what's going to get us. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We need to be set free from the foolishness. The foolish, the thing we can't see the real for the counterfeit. What's going to get us is another Jesus being preached. What's going to trip us up is another spirit. You don't need the Holy Ghost. Get this spirit. Get this. Get that. What's going to get us is another gospel being preached. Another gospel that I don't have to be saved. I don't have to belong to a church. I don't have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go to Sunday school. I can lead a whole movement. Another gospel, folks. Another Jesus. Another spirit and another gospel. How are you going to discern it? How are you ever going to know it's another Jesus? How are you ever going to know that it's another spirit? How are you ever going to know that it's another gospel? Because it's going to be so parallel and so familiar. 
shine that up a whole shine. And you chasing after the little Easter bunny. You chasing after the babies. Okay, so don't, why would you put them in Casper Ghosts? Anyway, put them in the boy. My babies was always Bible characters. Or they was, you know, just something's funny. It, why would you, why, what? What? You just gonna wipe out everything? Christmas? Really? Listen, I ain't got nothing to do with what you do in your house. But what I'm telling you right now, is that this spirit is so deceiving. It has desensitized us from that which is, is real and made us believe the counterfeit. Another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And that's what's going to get us. Why are you trying to talk about witches and warlocks and the originality of Halloween? Okay, so if it was bad when it started, change it. Change the meaning of it. That's all. <laughs> you don't like Santa Claus? Okay, get M Mrs. Claus. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank God for imagination. Thank God for creativity. Thank God for childhood. I'm talking about you grown folks. I'm talking about the grown church. I'm talking about you grown people that's been ushering for 40 years. That's been singing for 25 years in the choir. I'm talking about you. I, let, let me lead the children and, and, their, and their fantasy work. Let me lead that. And let me talk about grown folk who are being eaten up with anger, eaten up with offense, eaten up with unforgiveness, eaten up with disappointment, eaten up with discouragement, uh, eaten up with the culture of the world, sucking in and drinking in like a milkshake, drinking Netflix, drinking Hulu. That's all you watch. That's all you watch. That's all you know. You know every movie. You know every song. You know every artist. You know, but you don't know the scriptures. I'm talking to you grown folks that's still cussing that's still getting drunk that's still fornicating you're so unfocused you're so you're scattered scattered minds scattered brains you can't properly discern good from evil because the discernment is low the discernment is low and when your discernment is low Woo, shata. Uh, woo, your emotions are high. The sensuality is high. What feeds your, what feeds your entertainment? We all would rather sugar than spinach. Mm. Hey, God, I hear you. Woo, glory. Huh? Hallelujah. We all would prefer sugar to spinach. Come on now. We all would prefer potato chips to collard greens. We all would prefer Twinkies and whatever your preference is. We all would prefer pound cake. We all would prefer homemade ice cream. Come on here. To a smoothie. We all, we all crave the sugar. We all would desire the junk food. We all would prefer the Doritos. Come on here. To a salad. We all would prefer it. But we got to know the difference. We got to know the difference. And the things that you once stood against, the things that you once rebuilt, you now allow. Now, grown people, say, folks, you don't want to pay your tithes, but you're in the casino. Really? But you don't want to go trick or treat. Uh. <laughs> Woo, God, are you listening to me? Hi, Shia. Hi, yeah. Come on, come on over, see Robin Stevens. Conscience, conviction, and prayer. Just all over everything. Just all over everything. And trying to make, listen, and the things that's going to deceive us is another Jesus, it's a different spirit. And it's another, a different gospel than what we've preached. That's what's deceiving us. That's what's tripping us up. And because our spiritual discernment is so low, we are easily deceived. We are easily deceived. Oh my God. Watch this. You got, you got to, you got to understand how how important this is and so these false apostles 
verse 14, and deceitful workmen in the church, in the church, leave culture alone. If you don't want your kids to go trick-or-treating, all right. You don't want them to be in the Easter parade, okay. You don't want them to go see Santa Claus, do what you do in your house. But that ain't where the devil is. That ain't where the devil is. The devil is set himself up in the house of God with counterfeit miracles, counterfeit signs and wonders, counterfeit gifting right in the house of God. Oh, Rabbi Shekha, these people are false apostles, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles of Christ. Hold them to the scripture test. If you're an apostle, hold, I got to hold you to the scripture test. I've had several, they, they don't, they, they not, they're not happy with me and it's okay. And I said to several of them, you're a prophet. You're not an apostle. You are a prophet, but God knows you're a prophet. Can see through mud, but you're not an apostle. And, 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 and listen, I get it, but, but I, I know, I know what the Bible says. I know what the scriptures hold you to and you're not that. You can be apostolic, but you're not the gift of the apostle. False apostles masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder. Because Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Our spiritual discernment is low, folks. Our spiritual discernment is low and our emotions are high. Because we are not praying in the Holy Ghost. We're not praying in the Holy Ghost. We are not praying in the Holy Ghost. We are not building ourselves up on our most holy faith. And so ungodly people have crept into the church unaware, secretly. And have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. How did they creep in? The absence of the fivefold ministry, the absence of teaching on Holy Spirit, the absence of individual believers being strong in the power of the Spirit of God, the absence of the gifts of the Spirit, all nine of the gifts, the absence of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, my God, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, discernment, the gift of faith. Are you listening to me? We, because we have, we have eradicated what is authentic. We now see the deception as authentic. We now see the counterfeit as the real. Because of the absence, because of the absence, because of cessation teaching, because of the absence, or because some of you who were in the charismatic and Pentecostal world, you got injured, you got hurt. I'm sorry it happened to you. But it doesn't change the fact that Holy Ghost power is real. It doesn't change the, the fact that the power of the blood of Jesus yet saves. It does. Uh, I, I'm sorry you got disappointed. I'm sorry that we saw things that we should not have seen. I'm sorry that some of your parents were reckless. I'm sorry that some of your pastors were ungodly and unbridled. I'm so sorry that happened. But it doesn't change the fact that the local church is where you belong. It doesn't change the fact that you still need a pastor. You still need an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher. It doesn't change the fact that you still need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't change the fact that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are authentic. I'm sorry that your father slipped into adultery. I'm sorry that you saw him hit your mother. I'm so sorry. I'm not saying this to be, to, to be taken lightly, but I still need you to understand that the power of the Holy Ghost is real and the power of the blood still saves and the gospel of Jesus Christ, the authentic biblical Jesus is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. You still got to repent. 
you still got to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins. And you still need the gift of the Holy Ghost. You still, it ain't changed nothing because you got hurt. It ain't changed nothing. I hear, I know it. I hear, I heard my son yesterday. I heard the cries of the people. I know that that, that broke your spirit. I know that that broke your heart. I know that you lost confidence in legitimate authority because you felt that you were submitted and you got disappointed. I understand that. But don't chase the counterfeit. Don't chase the counterfeit looking for healing. The only place you're going to get healed is in the word of God. The only place you're going to get delivered from all of that. It's in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to overcome that is by receiving the power of the Holy Spirit and daily speaking in tongues and daily walking by the Spirit of God. Chasing. You're chasing something that will destroy your soul. It's another Jesus. It's a different spirit than which you believed. And it's a different gospel. Bako Shabbat. I know it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wish I could hold you. I wish I could lay my hands on you. I wish I could just get in a room with all of you and just say, please come lay on my, lay on my bosom. Let me, let me, let me just hold you. Let, let me just hug you. Let, let me help you. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that for you. I wish that I could, I could, I could ask you to, to come into a place where you really understood healing the power of the Holy Spirit. I wish you had met me instead of them. I wish you had seen my life instead of theirs. I wish. I wish you had had godly leaders. I wish you had had godly parents. I wish that you had not been molested. I wish that you had never gotten pregnant and had an abortion. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I desire that for every believer, for every person watching, for your family. For I wish I could fix it, but I can't. Your reality is your reality. But what you're chasing is another Jesus. What you're chasing is another spirit than what you first. It wasn't Holy Spirit that failed. It wasn't the Lord Jesus Christ that failed. It's not that the gospel of Jesus Christ fails. People fail. People that you trusted failed you. People that you believed in failed you. People that you saw as righteous and holy you caught a glimpse of their humanity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With everything that's in me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I saw some of the things I saw. I'm sorry that I've experienced some of the things that I've experienced in the church. It wasn't the Easter Bunny that tried to rape me. It wasn't Santa Claus that tried to kiss me in the basement of the church. Not one bag of Halloween candy has ever hurt me. I know what it is. But I refuse to give up on what is real. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But what you're chasing will hurt you more eternally. Don't become desensitized because of your hurt, because of your injury, because of your disappointment. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come back to the Lord. Come back to what is right. Come back to the scriptures. Come back to the gifts of the Spirit. Come back to the move of the Holy Spirit. Come back. Come back to the blood still works. Forgiveness is real. Redemption is authentic. And the baptism with the Holy Spirit is still the gateway to the supernatural. Ooh. <sighs> I 
If I could just get you to understand the baptism, the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I can't heal all the stuff that happened to you. But don't run after the counterfeit to get healed. Don't become desensitized to the authenticity of the upper room. Don't become desensitized to the power of speaking in tongues every day. Don't become desensitized to a prayer life, to the reading of the scriptures, to the high view of the word of God. Because you were hurt, because you were disappointed, let me, let me tell you that this stuff still works. And this Bible has never lied to me. And it won't lie to you either. Come on back. Come on back to the real. Come on back to the authentic Christ. Come back to the authentic church. Come back to the authentic upper room. Come back to authenticity. Don't become desensitized. Father, we thank you. Hey, I love y'all. <laughs> Woo, but I got to go. Mm. I'm rocking now. I'm rocking now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know. That this will save you. Over and over. I'm saved. By his power divine. I'm saved. I don't want another Jesus. I don't want another gospel. And I certainly don't want another Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Love y'all. See y'all in Houston. Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> been a cause in the pandemic. Hashtag Bishop Corletta J. Bond. Hashtag School of the Holy Spirit. I'm rocking because Holy Spirit is still speaking. Praise God. Hashtag it. Please and share this. Share this. Share this right now. Share this. Let every wandering child, every wandering son and daughter, somebody get me to Kanye. Somebody get me to me. Somebody get me. Somebody can hear me. Somebody can hear me. Get me to him. Let me love him. Let me hold him. His mental illness is not what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is his deception to this culture and to this generation. And those of us that know the word of truth, we got to stay connected to the Holy Ghost. Hey, I got to go. Hey, son. Hey, Bishop. <laughs> I got to go. My God. I love y'all. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> It's still Pentecost in the pandemic. I'm still Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. I love y'all. Share this. <laughs>